After the skirmish with Jamonville's forces, Washington feared. We might be attacked by considerable forces. He undertook to fortify his position at the Great Meadows during the last two days of May. In the first three days of June, he built a circular palisaded fort, which he called Fort Necessity. In early June, Washington learned that Colonel Joshua Fry died at Wills Creek on May 31st. Washington was promoted to colonel and assumed command of the Virginia Regiment. The rest of the Virginia Regiment arrived at the Great Meadows on June 9th along with supplies and nine small cannons called swivel guns. Washington's command now totaled 293 officers and men. He was reinforced several days later by about a hundred men of Captain James McKay's independent company of regular British troops from South Carolina. Washington's attempts to retain his Indian allies were not successful. While the South Carolinians remained at the Great Meadows, Washington and his Virginians spent most of June opening a road from Fort Necessity to Gitz's Plantation, a frontier settlement in the direction of the Forks of the Ohio, reports that a large force of French and Indians was advancing from Fort Duquesne, however, caused him to withdraw his men to the Great Meadows, where they arrived July 1st. The next day, they strengthened Fort Necessity by improving the trenches outside the stockade. In the morning of July 3rd, a force of about 600 French and 100 Indians approached the fort. After the French took up positions in the woods, Washington withdrew his men to the entrenchments. Rain fell throughout the day, flooding the marshy ground. Both sides suffered casualties, but the British losses were greater than the French and Indian losses. The fighting continued sporadically until about 8 p.m. Then Captain Louis Colon de Villiers, commander of the French force and brother of Jumonville, requested a truce to discuss the surrender of Washington's command. Hand sanitizer. Oh wow, this is awesome. How are you? Great. This is awesome. I came down here earlier in the year and I couldn't, but you guys were closed, I think. Is this open year round or is it? Yeah, every day except Christmas and uh, New Year. Really? I must have I just must thought have it was closed. Now in the winter time, sometimes it was closed due to the weather. Maybe that was it. It was so, just bad or something. Yeah, the, the roads. The yeah. center opened at 9 o'clock. Uh, <clears throat> the grounds were open sunrise to sunset. Okay, so now is everything back here centered or is, do you travel around the park? Is there well, other destinations? Everything is on this side. The meadow is over here. The okay. Field is over here. Okay, yeah. awesome. And is this like a diorama of the layout? This diorama here is for uh, the day of the battle. This is what, so we have lots of the meadow. Okay. That's what the fort's going to look like. That's awesome. The fort, as built, is nothing more than a storehouse. Okay. Washington is building a road. He's not intending to fight a battle here. Right. His mission is to build a road across the mountains. Okay. And he comes into this meadow here in Sunday. About around May 25th. He sees it as a place to build a supply camp. Okay. So he will set up a base camp here. While he's camped here, he finds out that the French are on his tail, on his trail here. He learns that from some Seneca Indians that are here. Okay. And he will take to about 40 men and about a dozen or so uh, they, uh, Seneca warriors, and they will go to the top of this chestnut ridge at a place called, today we call it Jamonville Glen. And there they find about 30, 35 French soldiers camped in this ravine. <clears throat> there will be a little 15 minute skirmish, and at the end of that skirmish, Washington wins, but in that process, the French commander is killed. The French, the French will claim that the French officer that is killed there is a French diplomat, and Washington will be accused of assassinating the French diplomat. So, knowing that, Washington will have to defend himself out here in the meadow um, on July 3rd, 1754. The French will come in, surround him, forcing the surrender. 
Oh, really? And he signs a surrender paper confessing to the fact that he's an assassin without knowing what he's really signing. Uh, he has a very poor translation of the, of the surrender document. Paper's wet, the ink is smudged on it. He doesn't really fully understand what he said or what he signed. And then he gets back to Williamsburg. Yeah. And then uh, French will, of course, take that. They'll use it as propaganda around the world. Right. Look what the British are doing in North America. Right. The British are not going to care much for that idea. So that will start the conflict, French Indian War. 1755, the British will send the army over here with uh, under the commanding general Braddock. His ambition, of course, is to finish what the colonials couldn't. They're going to drive the French out of the Ohio Valley. Well, that does not end well for uh, Braddock either. He is soundly defeated up at the, as he tries to cross the Longhelia River, about nine miles from Fort Duquesne. Uh, he has suffers about 900 casualties. He's wounded and he dies on the retreat. And he is buried just about a mile from here up okay, at cool. the Braddock Monument. And that really, <clears throat> those two events will 17, the next year, 1756, war is declared between France and England, and the okay. French Indian War officially begins, Seven Year War officially begins. So. With the killing of Braddock, then that's kind of like the last straw in, in, in well, the whole Well, that was war. kind of the, uh, the, the, yeah, the Braddock campaign really sets in full motion. Okay, the, yeah. The events that take place here. Really interesting. That was an it's awesome a, it, story. It's a uh, you have twenty minute film. I don't know if you get interested in that. The next showing will be at twelve thirty. Twelve thirty. Okay. Yeah. yeah. We might just. Uh, the museum behind you here is a self guided tour. Uh, push the buttons and they'll take you to story. Okay. Uh, coming out of the museum is another piece of that we talk about here, and that's the National Road, first federally, federally funded highway. That's William Ogden, right? Or Donna Via William Ogden, I think, National Road. Uh, National Road, I'm not sure what who that person okay. actually is, but I was... The major highway, was it, or the trains, or highway? It's, or? Uh, National Road was built in 1811. Okay. George Washington, <clears throat> as, as he becomes our president, leader, he recognizes our country is divided, not north and south, but east and west. Okay. And... We need a, some way to connect these together because anybody living west of the Allegheny Mountains is going to uh, find other ways to. Right, so I, I get it. So, so to unite the Union, National so Road was a really National big deal. National Road was a good deal. Okay. And construction started in 1811. Um, 1818, it was complete from Cumberland, Maryland to Wheeling, West Virginia. Okay. And then it went on past that. Supposed to end at St. Louis about 1835 or so. Congress refused to fund it, so it stops in Vandalia, Illinois. Oh, okay. And then uh, the trains sort of take over, but uh, it is comes back to life again with the invention of the automobile. And much of Route 40 follows the national. Oh, is that National Road yeah, 40? Oh, National excellent, Road. cool. I was I never knew that, so yes. I didn't know if it was 66 or 40, if they kind of blended into Lincoln Highway and National Road. So those are two different roads. There's two different roads. Lincoln Highway is Route 30, I believe. Oh, okay, cool. And if you follow the Lincoln Highway here in Pennsylvania, that is the route that General Forbes takes when he comes in to actually capture Fort Duquesne. Oh, really? So excellent. Route 30 will follow pretty much General Fortune's route. Uh, don't know much about Route 66. But yeah, that, no, that's great. Yeah, those two, uh, yeah, those two great. roads do cut through Pennsylvania. Yeah, that's great, great, great. In fact, uh, Route 40 or Route 30 passes by Fort Ligonier, uh, just up the road from here. Yeah, my and, buddy was working on a, on something up that up there. I'm I'm gonna have to go check that yeah. out. I guess that was a big battle then too. Well, it was not a battle, but it is a major French and Indian War fort. So what were they doing at the forts then? Just like is that was just like that, uh, from the raids and stuff, maybe just safety yeah, or it's a training kind of post? A staging staging area yeah. for troops. Okay. Fort Ligonier is a major supply base. Okay, so it was uh, for troops yeah, and was, stuff, yeah. but they were just stationing yeah. them yeah, and holding can, them. Uh, and yeah, you can really get a good look at. 
Frontier Fort life at Fort Lincoln here. Okay, cool, it's, yeah, because I haven't made it there yet. That's interesting. That's and good that's, to know. And it's right on Route 30, so you can go to Forbes Road, you can go to Braddock Road. Right, yeah, so. dude, that's awesome. I'm going to be heading there next week, so I appreciate you, Brian. Do you mind if I use this on YouTube for um, my channel, Exploring the American yeah. Frontier? Yeah, sure. That is so spectacular. I'm going to give you one of these. Yeah, that, that's, that's fine. That's so cool, and I appreciate you. Yeah, Thank you so much. much. That's yes. a wealth of knowledge. Okay. Near midnight, after several hours of negotiation, the terms were reduced to writing. Washington and McKay signed the multi-part document. The British were allowed to withdraw with the honors of war, retaining their baggage and weapons, but having to surrender their swivel guns. Washington surrendered Fort Necessity to the French. One clause stated that Washington was guilty of the assassination of a French officer, Dumontville. He denied this. He said the translation he had been given was not assassination, but death of or killing. In any event, the French used this propaganda to great advantage in efforts to discredit the English. The British troops left Fort Necessity for Wills Creek on the morning of July 4th. From there, they marched back to Virginia. The French burnt Fort Necessity and afterwards returned to Fort Duquesne. The following year, Washington joined another British expedition to the Forks of the Ohio under the command of General Edward Braddock. Come on, come on, dudes. Let's go explore. So this is Fort Necessity. Just a little fence. Apparently I have Fort Necessity at my home because it looks about the same condition. But what kind of tree is this? It's a protected tree. Anybody knows what this is? Looks like they're trying to protect that tree. This one too. Yeah, I'm curious if anybody knows what kind of tree these are and why, why they're being protected. So maybe the 1754. Soon after 8 p.m. on July 3, 1754, the British crossed this meadow to discuss the surrender terms being offered by the French under Captain Louis Colon de Villiers. The timing was fortunate for the British, as about half of their 400 soldiers were sick, wounded, or dead. Surrounded by some 700 French and Indians, they had little chance of escape over the next four hours. French and British officers negotiated the surrender details. At daybreak on July 4th, interesting, the British marched from Fort Necessity between two facing ranks of French troops. 
The surrender terms allowed the British to carry out their arms and supplies and wounded and return to their own country. Soon after it was vacated, the French burnt Fort Necessity and left it in ruins. That's the French surrender documents. Very cool, man. I think this is where they hold people sit and they do reenactments, I'm assuming. That would be really cool. Please stay off earthwork. Earthworks? I thought it said earthworms. Look, the cannon. So stay on the trail. They want the grass protected, apparently. So there's a flag. What? Yeah, so here's the entrance to the fort. I wonder who's taking it. is being eaten alive. That's, that is cool. So this would be your little hedge of protection. You feel safe in here. Like it's, you feel like a trapped rat. That's what I feel like. But I wouldn't be getting, there's something in between me, you know? And I have a muzzle loader, rifle, and I could stick it out of here and you know, shoot out at somebody and they can't get to me. So it's better than nothing. This is pretty sure just a replica. What it said is it burn it down, I think. So look, here's the rations list for the guys. You know, you just scratch it in because you don't have anything. It's pretty permanent. Lots of gunpowder. Cool, I think so. It's definitely something. As we walk around, there's the big hole. That that had to be built to like kinda, you know, get out and get your weapons out and shoot. I don't know. Maybe you just get some air, some vision. This one's a little tighter. And then you could always stick your rifle out here. Oi, French. Get out of here. We want the land for ourselves. Butterfly garden. What's up? Where are they? Yeah, but I don't want to hurt them. Where are they? You know? They're eating? Yeah, they're eating, huh? They like something. Do you see the mushrooms eating the, the trees? The wood? Look. 
eating all the bark. I'm gonna walk the outside. This is where they'd be coming. There's some divots. These are always some you know, low-lying points. There's men out here on the ground, you know. Come on, bud. Hop down. This is what it would be like if we're camped. You know what I mean? Get your rifle out. Get your pretend rifle out. Yeah, this is a rifle. Cool. So that's Fort Necessity. Cool. Awesome. So, inf oh, there he is. You got mycelium on that log. Huh. See, she's everywhere. Man. Brethren, you came a great way to visit us, and many sorts of evils might have befallen you by the way, which might have been hurtful to your eyes and inward parts, for the woods are full of evil spirits. We give you this string of wampum to clear up your eyes and mind, and remove all the bitterness of your spirit that you may hear us speak in good cheer. Journeying to this spot in 1754, you would have traveled through dense forests that contained many dangers. To help visitors overcome the physical and spiritual hardships they'd faced, American Indians performed a cleansing ritual known as at the Wood's Edge Ceremony.
Surrender Fort Necessity, the Virginia Regiment met trouble from the start. After attacking a French detachment in May 1754, the inexperienced Washington built a fort of necessity, but he was placed the small stockade in a low field. Oh, but he placed the small stockade in a low field surrounded by bushy heights. Fort Necessity offered little defense against the overwhelming French and Indian forces. Washington surrendered after a day-long battle, returning home on July 4th and resigning from the Virginia Regiment. So everybody loses, even the greatest. You just keep your head up and keep going. This is the People's Highway, and they crowd it from rim to edge. My brain almost aches from the variety of images that fill it. All of America seems to be breaking up and moving westward. Long lines of wagons swarming with children head into the mountains. And going east, we come across vast droves of hogs, with at least a thousand animals on their way to market. The route is in excellent shape, and the horses almost seem to fly. Going so fast, we're barely able to keep our seats. Just a few hundred yards from here, traffic bustled along America's busiest road in the early 1800s. It was a key route west for settlers and a major route east for farmers and merchants. This was the first federally funded highway built by the United States government. It became the road that made America a nation. Named for the Delaware Indian scout who hand blazed the route from 1751 to 1752, this pack trail ran from Wills Creek to the mouth of Redstone Creek near Brownsville. Brownsville, interesting. So you can come through and hear some of these stories. I'm not going to go through them all. I think Brian literally told us all of them, so. Very cool stuff. This is where we were in Jamonville. These are very cool. You see these a lot. Wampum bead. See, I don't know what a wampum bead is. If anybody knows what a wampum bead is, that would be awesome. Reading the belt, the white, black, bead, make it clean, the purpose of rotation. Okay. Oh, okay. So, like, what are wampums? Those. <laughs> But like, how do they come out? You know what I mean? Like, I don't know. Clay, I guess. Oh, look, a beaver pelt. Does a beaver make a great hat?
pussy run. What are these seven and eight? Musket balls, wow. I think they're musket balls, that's cool. So here's the world war aspect of it. So the war for an empire, right? That's all the stuff that was going down in the... Asia? Classy, wow, okay. So like, what is that, the Philippines it looks like? Maybe in India. Indonesia. And then the price of peace, Great Britain and France finally declared peace on February 10th, 1763 with the Treaty of Paris. Very cool, look at this. Leaders of the world. Gibraltar. So that was all the places that they were fighting. Senegal, Barbados, Granada. These little islands. In Spanish, I'm assuming. They were just qual like there's resources down there, I'm assuming. So they just wanted them resources. There's King George III, oh noble king. After the French and Indian War, King George III supported several policies that rarely served for their intended purposes. Instead, the policies fanned discontent among many colonists. Yeah, from what I read, this guy was a jerk. And that's the Star of David. Do you see that? Those are six pointed stars. The Road to the Revolution. The aftermath of the French and Indian War set in motion a series of events that led to the American Revolutionary War. 
By the end of the French and Indian War in 1763, the American colonists unquestionably considered themselves to be loyal subjects of the British crown. After all, they had fought, bled, and died alongside them in order to sweep French out of North America. But that feeling of partnership and loyalty slowly began to dissolve as Great Britain started taxing the colonies in order to help them pay for its swollen empire. During the 1760s, disillusionment among the colonists grew. By the 1770s, it turned to the fear, suspicion, rebellion, and finally, war. In 1783, the Revolutionary War ended. The Americans, led by George Washington, defeated the British and gained control of new territories, extending from the Alleghenies west to the Mississippi River and from Canada south to Florida. The young United States government would face many challenges, including finding new ways to build roads that would tie the new nation together. And that's where National Road and the story It's hard to get through. Life surely was different before it was built, that's for sure. Interesting, interesting. Thomas Jefferson had some hair, man. Is he redheaded too? I think so. Very cool. And then there are advocates. The national road might pass through just a few states, but it would benefit the entire country. The most stupid are sensible of the benefit of a good road. We should look at the whole Look at this, that's awesome. That, that's an etching, that's cool. There's old Albert Gallon in there, the old sec, what they say, treasury? Railroads and roads is what he did. 
building them. Hey, there's a Costa wagon. in town. They're busy. No horns here. There's like boats. Land boats. Interesting. Look, here's little tiny guns. That's awesome. There's a big old horn. I don't know what that's for, but that's what it looks like. Is this a, I don't know what that is either. What is it? It's, um, yeah, it's an oxen yoke. Yep. So they put the cow's heads in there, or the horse's heads in there, or the cow, whatever it is, ox. Old stuff. Highway robbery, if you ask me. Someone's got to pay to fix up the ruts your wheels carve in the road. Should it be me? All I'm saying is that I'm just trying to make a living. And the government's always angling to take a piece of it, aren't they? You got that right. You can't imagine how much it costs to feed and water the horses, keep the coach in good shape, and spend the night in such a fine establishment as this. 25 cents is a bargain for a bed and the meals you get here. And you still haven't answered my question. Who's supposed to pay for the road if it's not the people using it? It does everybody good connecting east and west. So I think everyone should pay for it, or no one should have to. Don't try that line on Toll Taker Humphreys. You know him, right? I heard he shot a man's cow when he tried to walk past without paying. Dang. I can travel 50 miles in a day. That's it. So if my expenses keep going up, I'm going to have to take on extra riders, pack a middle seat into the coach, or hang it up and move west. Join the migration. I heard Skinner sold his farm and got land in Indiana. Yeah. The buyer offered him 50% more than Skinner paid just three years ago. I think they're drunk. They're not going to stop talking. Stop talking. 